welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get started. Straight from New York. Yo, yo, this handsome man. Yo, yo, ah, now. Fucker. Tune in to Al Joe the Funk Master. Watch your grill, yoga, knock that cold fast. And talking shit, now we talking facts. Where the man are off the back. You in trouble, came to burst your bubble. I don't shelter punches. They find home on your mind about a devil. It's the weekly scraps. You don't need a map. GPS, I'm right here to lead a dash. The world doesn't know it needs, but I grow disease. Planet, fuck a name and the fame. Only legacy remains. Remember the name, Al Jermaine Sterling. It ain't shit, it ain't shit. Motherfucker. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the weekly scraps. We just wrapped up the Contenders series for this season, and it was a phenomenal one. Um, well, the main event was phenomenal. The other fights were good, but obviously the main event was the one that everyone was tuning in for, at least for me. That's what I really cared about in terms of the matchup. Just want to know more about Bo. But before we get into that, quick little recap, man. I left Vegas. I'm finally back in New York. I haven't been in New York since the U- UBS fights with um, Yair Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. Um, we all know how that ended with the fight ending injury, kind of kind of shitty. But um, before that, the last time I was in New York was June 28th, uh, helping Dennis for his fight, getting ready for the contenders, and then flying out to Vegas to, to go start doing my PT, as well as helping Marab get ready for his fight with Jose Aldo, the king of Rio. Oh. So, yeah. My last hoorah with the boys getting in some training. Um, JP, Marab, Devarajvili, Dennis Bazookia, um, Ode, who came down, I think, two times he made it down. Rafael Sunsal made it down once to a training session. Chase Pammy, thank you for helping out. So we had some some good guys, hands on deck. Um, hitting pads and drilling with um, Eric Nixick. So thank you guys, everybody down there who played a part in helping me out and just getting me prepared for this next phase of training camp. So Friday was the last training session of last week. So we did a grappling grappling rounds, feet to floor, like actual takedown. So we, we got after it pretty good. I think we did four three-minute rounds, and then we did a couple um, rounds on the, on the floor, just straight up grappling. And um, the goal, you know, I don't want to even give away all my goods and secrets of the way I train, but we had a goal in mind for that the rounds on the floor, and it's just stuff that's going to be conduct um, productive Oh, conductive. What is this like? An electric current? Productive <coughs> towards um, the mindset that you need per f- in in a fight situation, grappling situation. Just having some type of goal in mind when you're in these situations, not just doing it just to do it. You know, so that's kind of where th- that was at for me. Um, and then after that, we went to we took a little downtime, got PT, my last PT session, and then. We made it out to the Bad Bunny concert, my my girl and I. So that was the last hoorah. I had two drinks throughout the night and one at dinner at this place called Kumi in the Mandalay Bay. I recommend definitely really, really good food, especially if you like Japanese food. And then I had the one tequila drink there and then I had a, another tequila drink at the light nightclub at Mandalay Bay as well. That was the post, post-party or post or after party from the concert. And the concert was phenomenal, man. Like, obviously, I don't know everything that the guy is saying. Like, almost zero. There's probably, like, 2% of the words that he actually says in his music that uh, that I understand. But he's a great performer. The music is good vibes. And the songs that I do know is just a good vibe, good chill. You could bop to it, you know, kind of thing. So that was cool. And to see the stuff that he did with the flying dolphins, the him on the private little island, and then him floating around the entire arena, giving everyone kind of, like... I guess FaceTime or showing him love, you know, like every time he got to a different section, like it, it, it would erupt. And that just goes to show how popular Bad Bunny really is. And he kind of reminds me of like a modern day Hispanic version of Elvis Presley. And I say this because of the way he has such an in with the females, like girls love him. He's going to these concerts, he's making out with these chicks. And it's just kind of like, I remember watching the Elvis Presley movie and him showing him doing all this crazy stuff. And I'm just like, yo, bro, it's a wild man. But I get it. I get it. 
If I was a female, maybe I'm doing that too. I don't know. At a concert, you're drunk. You may be on some other things and you're just kind of like, oh my God, bad money. I get it. I get it. The guy's the man right now, you know? So um, he's living it up. And then, yeah, so we went to the, to the concert. We went to light. And then early morning, I had to get up, get the rest of the things packed. We had to make it out. So I got to go see my mom. And do a, I just got to make my rounds when I got back to New York um, on the first day. Got to go see some of my boys. Um, shout out to Dre, his family that came up from Virginia. Didn't get to see the kids that night. Got to see them the very next day. Uh, kid just turned one. So big milestone for, you know, having kids. They got two kids now. And then I got to catch up with my mom, man. I haven't seen my mom in so long. We got to catch up and just talking and just... Um, Seeing what's good and bad in the world that's her world and my world, you know. So, got to mix and match. And, of course, it's never easy coming home because every time you come home, there's always something else that you have to worry about. It never fails. I can never come home and be like, oh, wow, everything is good. I can chill and just focus on the fight. It never goes that way. <clears throat> so, with that being said, obviously, I got a couple of things I got to take care of before I head out to Abu Dhabi. So, I'm trying to get it. A handle on those things now because I've been gone for a couple months, so I'm trying to do the right thing as best as I can so things don't fall apart because the more you neglect it, the easier it is for it to unravel and the harder it will be to then put it back together later. I'm trying to do that now so I don't have to worry about fixing all these things um, in the future. Um, so it is what it is. That's just life. Like everybody else, man, we all got our problems. You look at my problems, I look at your problems, you're probably going to be like, you know what, I'm going to keep my problems, you know. If people only knew half the things, but it's, uh, yeah, it's part of life, you know. So, with that said, I did want to talk about Bo Nickel. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I don't have any other words to describe this guy. He is what I call a once-in-a-lifetime type of talent per weight class. Um, phenomenal. I mean, the guy went out there. It's like, Dana, did we really... And I, Dana even said this. just like He's probably like, yeah, dummy. I, you should have signed me the first time. And I'm just like, yeah, Dana. Should have signed him the first time. Like, he could have made his UFC debut already. Like, we did not need to see Bo Nickel on the Contender Series for his second time to know how good the kid freaking is. It's 2-0. Now 3-0 after getting another phenomenal quick finish over another opponent. And super technical. Took his time. Utilizing his feints. And it took about 62, 64 seconds. Whatever it was. Lands a big overhand left. After he lands the left, he shoves the kid down. Jumps on him. Right on his neck. Eventually settles him into the mount position. Somehow, some way, he transitions into a rolling triangle off of his back, secures the bag, locks it in, gets the tap, fights over. Too easy, man. And honestly, watching him like that just makes me go like, dude, I can honestly legitimately do this to guys. Like, I try to make the fight like, oh, we should kickbox a little because people love that. And then I'm just like... This just reinforces my stance once again that we should be taking the path of least resistance. If you're a striker, bro, go out there and strike and do your thing. Don't try to become a grappler. Be competent. But don't try to change your whole game to become a grappler unless that's the path of least resistance to winning that specific fight. So for me, I'm like, I could, you know what, man? It just, again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It just makes me comfortable and confident that I can go out there and legitimately just keep the distance, take my time, time a perfect shot, get in, and if I do that, I can get the fight to the ground and more than likely finish the guy in the first round. Kind of like, and I hate doing this to the guy because he obviously just won and won a couple fights. It's the uh, same thing I did to Sanhagen, you know? And even a couple of my older fights, like you see some of the fights where if the fight hits the ground early, man, I'm usually finishing the fight in those rounds, you know, so, um, or at some point in the fight, so, I, I, I'm excited for Bo, because I, I do think if he is able to make his UFC debut, he could get some real traction going into 2023, which I think would be smart of the UFC to do, how are they going to find an opponent, that's going to be the tough part, who's going to be willing to step up and say, I'm going to fight Bo, like, 
you had this one guy who's training with Robert Drysdale, jiu-jitsu ace, comes out, he gets smoked. You have a guy who's fighting for Cage Fury, who's 7-1. and one. You would think there would be some type of resistance. The guy, and I even said it while watching it, you guys are going to see this on YouTube, and uh, my reaction to, to watching the fight. And I go, this guy looks tentative, and he looks very, very scared. I don't want to say scared, but he looked very, very alarmed, like he was like very hesitant of doing anything because of the threat of the takedown and knowing what that would lead to. And you could see it in his face, see it in his eyes. It was just kind of like, the way he was moving and reacting, I was like, that doesn't seem like a free, loose fighter right now in that position. So I get it. You get taken down by Bo Nickel and you're not competent on the ground, you're more than likely getting submitted. That was the perfect matchup. Um, obviously, when he gets to the upper echelons and fighting guys who have some type of grappling background, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. you probably see him get touched up a bit. Um, but for right now, it's the Bo Nickel show, man. Ain't nobody stopping this guy anytime soon, as long as he has the right matchups and they bring him along. But I do think there are specific matchups in the top 15 of that, that division that Bo Nickel can get out of there. And if you look at Bo... He's not the most physically appealing guy. He doesn't look like Yoel Romero. He doesn't look like Paulo Costa. But the guy is strong and he's technical. And that's what makes him that damn good. That's what makes the guy scary. His technique and how technical he is. You look at Ben Askren. People look at him and he goes, oh, this guy's got a dad bot. But then he grabs you and you go, what the hell did you just grab me with? Like, I need to see. Give me, give me what, what is on your hands, sir? That's what Bo Nickel feels like. So if you ever grapple with someone who knows how to wrestle, knows how to use their body weight, push, pull, snap you down, it's a different type of feeling, man. And especially from here in the States, we have what we call American wrestling, folk style wrestling, different. We take guys down, we wrestle on the mat, meaning we we engage, we can't lock our hands. Like when you see guys get taken down and they can lock their hands around the waist, we can't do that. We have to go a tight waist and grab the wrist. We have to go spiral ride. We can't we can't connect our hands at any moment on the ground. Otherwise, that's a technical point that will get taken away from you. It's called a clasp. Um, so yeah. With that being said, folk style to me is a lot harder because you gotta work to keep guys down, but you learn how to ride legs, you learn how to control people without being able to lock your hands. People are constantly trying to stand up. And you constantly got to be able to bring them back down to the mat or let them up and then try to take them down again. So you got to kind of pick your poison. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, but before we do that, I just want to let you guys know, because I've been getting a lot of messages um, where people can get merchandise from to support aljamainstorm.com. We're going to put the link in the descriptions. It's always in the descriptions, but that is the direct place that you can get official merchandise from myself, the things that we make and things that I actually wear. Not these knockoff sites who steal my logo and then, and I don't even have the like, the heart to go through it and be super petty to like cease and desist kind of thing. It's just like, whatever, man. Like, you want to steal my shit? Hopefully, people are smart enough to know, like, that's not my website. I would rather you go to the UFC and spend X amount of dollars or go to my website where you could get it cheaper and get quality stuff, you know? So, yes. Um, but here we go. Bo Nickel. Hamzat Chemaev grappling match. This would be insane. Hamzat Chemaev, a freestyle wrestler. Bo Nickel has wrestled freestyle, has tried the circuit, I believe. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure how he did on that international circuit, but I think he had a couple of matches and he's been focusing more so on MMA. I don't want to see these guys fight right now. Hamzat's got way more experience. I think Hamzat... Um, just being in there with Gilbert Burns alone does a ton for his stock in terms of the experiment department, giving him the advantage because obviously the grappling is going to be very, very highly contested, but then the the, the stand-up will make things very, very different. So I don't want to see that fight right now. I would love to see them grapple. I think that would be a fun one. I know he called out Logan Paul for Bo Nickel, but... I don't know how that's going to ever happen. The UFC is not going to sign Bo Nickel to fight him. because that. I mean, if they did, I would love that. It would be fun, entertaining. Not sure it makes a ton of sense in terms of skill set when you have all these other guys that work so hard. And I mean, it's a money fight. I get it. I get it. A lot of eyes are going to be on the fight. I get it. I'm not knocking it. I just don't think that's a uh, 
a sensible fight from a technical st- uh, a technical standpoint and what these guys are both doing in their respective careers. So I would like to see these guys grapple though. Hamza Chemaev, demon on the mat, Bo Nickel, demon on the mat. I think a three-time NCAA champion for Penn State, maybe even a four-time. I would have to double-check to verify that. But Bo Nickel is that dude. And I don't know, man. I I would take freestyle over... I would take the folk style wrestler over the freestyle wrestler. My opinion. But, again, Hamza is way more proven in this world. I think maybe there will be some tricks that Bo hasn't seen yet that maybe Hamza could catch him with. But... If it's just straight up wrestling, I take Bo Nickel. Um, maybe if it's freestyle, maybe I have to go with Hamza. I don't know. I'm, I just think it's so competitive that it would be fun. And Bo Nickel, you, as you've seen, stepping over into a mounted triangle and then falling back and then getting in a rolling triangle, that's pretty impressive and really, really hard to do. Um, and I'm saying that from experience. You have to be super high level, super confident, super technical to set that up without losing it and just looking silly if you miss, you know? So I think it'll be a very, very fun fight. And um, hopefully we get to see it sometime down the line because I know people like to make those super matches. And I, I think it's a, a, it's highly possible that we can see that down the road. So we'll see what happens uh, with these guys. <clears throat> Next up, we got UFC Vegas 40, 61, actually, if I remember correctly, because the last one was 60. Yep. Mackenzie Dern taking on Xiaonan Sh- Yan. Now, Yan lost two in a row, but then <clears throat> the one that she lost to against Carla Esparza kind of says it all for me. Her grappling game is very, very um, uh, rudimentary. I think she needs a little bit more, ex- a lot of bit more experience. I'm going to just be honest here. She needs a lot more experience on the ground. Um, Mackenzie Dern isn't the best wrestler. She's got some cool upper body th- tricks that she tries to implement, some, some some like judo throws where she'll like try to hit a sweep. But if she can get Yan to the floor, I think the fight's over. I, I mean, there's no real way of saying like this is going to go back and forth. I think if the fight stays standing, Yan should have her way, even though Mackenzie Dern has been working diligently on her striking. I just think uh, Nan is just going to be a, a, a step ahead. I think to make it as concise as I can, Jan is going to be more efficient on the feet. She's going to be a step ahead with the striking. I think Mackenzie Dern, if she gets the fight to the ground or she pulls guards, she's going to be in autopilot and that fight's pretty much as good as over. We even seen her when she fought Marina um, Rodriguez. She looked extremely well when she got the fight on the ground and then when she couldn't get to the fight to the ground, Mackenzie Dern struggled. Then she came back. I think she bounced back with a win over Tisha Torres. Yeah, she did split decision. A UFC 273, that was the card I fought on in Jacksonville, actually. So, yeah, man, I think she's come a long way. Uh, Before she lost to Rodriguez, she won one, two, three, four fights in a row over Cyphers, Ronda Marcos, Ginger Droba, Nina Nunez, and then she lost to Marina Rodriguez. So she's right there to be right back in that title contention position. She has to get past Xiao Nan, who's, I think, lost two in a row to Carla Esparza, and to Marina Mar- Rodriguez by split decision. So she got finished by Carla, and then she got split decision loss to Marina Rodriguez. But before that, she was undefeated, and she beat Glaudeja, she beat Carolina Kowakaswick, Angelina Hill, Angelina Angela Hill, wow, I can't believe I just botched that. Kondo, she beat Pereira. So she was undefeated in the UFC. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fights in the UFC she was undefeated for. Yeah, man, crazy. And then she ran into a little bit of a roadblock, but it happens. So I think for this matchup, I'm leaning towards Dern. I like Jan's fighting style, her spirit on the feet. But I just think... Dern should have made the adjustments to get the fight down to the ground. And if she gets the fight down to the ground, I don't think she lets her get away like she let Marina Rodriguez get away in terms of like the round expiring. I think she's going to try to get the finish and hunt the finish 
and try to get her out of there as soon as possible. Because obviously, the longer the fight goes on, the less and less effective jujitsu um, honestly is, in my personal opinion. Um, what else we got? Randy Brown taking on Francisco Trinaldo, Randy Rude Boy Brown at 170. I think Randy, how many fights has he won? <clears throat> Randy's 15 and 4. He's on a three fight winning streak right now. Rude Boy, Alex Oliveira, Jared Gooden, where he broke his toe, and then Chaos Williams, where he won by split. So this will be a big one for him. Trinaldo's a dog, though, man. He's one of those guys. I think it's a sleeper, but I think at 170, obviously with his age, he's 44. He's a tough dude. He hits hard, but I think he's slowing down a bit. And I think at 170, he's going to have a little bit of a height difference. He's 5'9", 70-inch reach. I think Randy Brown is like a 78-inch. Is Randy Brown is a 78 reach, and he's 6'3". So Randy should be able to piece him up from the outside relatively safe. And then from there... Um, just got to be smart because Trinola will throw caution to the wind like no other. So that's the um, the main concern for me. But Randy's, Randy's good on the ground too, man. He can mix it up if he needs to. It's just his approach. I know he likes to stand and bang. He likes to trade him up sometimes. Um, obviously, that's more exciting. People like to see hands. People like to see kicks. They like to see knockouts. But for me, again, I'm just about the path of least resistance, man. So I don't know if taking Trinaldo down. I think Trinaldo's probably going to look to take Randy down because, again, he's going to be so much longer, so much wiry. Eight-inch reach advantage. He's going to be able to pepper him from the outside. Front kicks all day long. Um, side kicks. Footwork. It's going to be very, very hard for Trinaldo to close the gap. He's going to need to barrel inside, try to do some Mike tyson as like peekaboo, get inside of Randy and then try to take him down. Um, if not, that's going to be a long night for Francisco Trinaldo till it's not. And that's the way I see that fight going. Ryoni Barcelos versus Trevin Jones. This should be a fun one. Barcelos losing to Victor Henry in his last one, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Victor Henry and Timur Valiev. Majority decision he lost. And Trevin Jones, he's on a two-fight skid himself to Javed Basharat and Sadi Cobb. Karakmanov, guillotine in the third round. But before that, he beat Batista, um, ground and pound. And before that, he knocked out Valiev, but it got turned to a no contest. And why did this get turned to a no contest? I clicked the thing. Remember, I look at topology. They usually are pretty good with this. Mm. Tested positive for marijuana. Wow. So, it sounds like he smoked the day of the fight. <laughs> I don't know. Because in Vegas, I mean, was that even in Vegas? Yeah, Vegas to pop for marijuana is kind of like, they, they raise the threshold. It should be almost extremely, extremely hard. So, <clears throat> I don't know. Tough one. Uh, I don't know really, I haven't really trained with Trevin. I know he's been working hard at the PI. I've been seeing him down there, him and his crew, his brother. <sighs> I'm hoping they can get into the win column and turn back Barcelos. Barcelos, when he came in, he beat Khalid Taha. He beat Saeed Nurmagomedov. He beat Carlos Hachin. And after that, he beat Chris Gutierrez on the Ultimate Fighter finale. So, yeah, man. Really good guys, and he beat Kurt Hollibo on UFC Fight Night. Well, wow, Kurt Hollibo was in the UFC. I forgot about that. So that just shows how stacked this bantamweight division is, man. To get a win streak going is very, very difficult, and the guys who do get it going, I think it says a lot. You know, it says a lot about your tenacity. It says a lot about your mental fortitude, and for you to get it done is just very, very impressive. And there's a couple bantamweight matchups on this card. Um, the next one. That's not been away. It's Sadiq Youssef versus Don Shanus. I think he's Don Shanus is making his debut in the UFC and at the featherweight division. He's on a one, two, three, four, five fight win streak. Finish. Decision. Finish. 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 Wow. Got a lot of first round finishes. Oh man. This might be a very interesting one. Oh, he beat Kelleher? Matt Kelleher? That's Kelleher. Brian Kelleher's brother. Wow. 
Kelleher hasn't fought since this fight. Actually, that was in 2017. Damn. Okay. So this kid seems like he's the he might be the real deal. Okay. He's from Bridgewater State University, born in Easton, Massachusetts. So he's a East Northeast guy. Okay. Um, Yusuf, obviously, we know who, what his deal is. Tough dude from the contenders. Uh, he beat Alex Caceres. His last one was a loss, unanimous decision to Arnold Allen. It was a close fight, but I, you could tell Arnold was like in the pilot seat or the driver's seat the entire way throughout the fight. There wasn't too many moments that I was like, oh, it looks like Yusuf is about to come back and take this. Um, Allen did a great job of staying poised and just doing what he needed to do to win, which he does pretty well, predominantly all the time. So this is a... I, I, I got to go with Yusuf on this one. I'm going to go with the experience. Yusuf is 12-2. and two. This kid, Shanus, is 12-3. and three. Should be a fun fight. Shanus looks like he finishes fights. He goes for it. I mean, got like three first-round finishes in a row. I think this guy is going to try to go for it and, and hunt down Yusuf. Yusuf's got to make sure he's ready to slug it out if needed. Make sure his defense is tight because you can't let this guy come in here and take all that you worked for. You're taking everything I worked for, mother... Er... Try not to curse. Next up, John Canasteta, Castaneda versus Daniel Santos Castaneda. I think another Dana White contender series guy. Boom. Nope. He came from Combate. Just straight up Combate. Good. Good for him, man. Not everyone needs to go through contender series. He was in contender series back in 2017 of August. He won. Then he went back to Combate. So, hmm. He fought Gustavo Lopez. He beat Gustavo Lopez at Combate. Wow. Ground and pound. Round four. He knocked out Chris Beal, who was on the Ultimate Fighter. Wow, he beat Chaden. Chaden from Hawaii. Chaden, I think, is pretty fucking tough, man. And it's true. Who else? The Contender Series. Who did he fight? Where did he go? Dana White. Oh, it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was Chaden. And that was a decision, though. Chayden is tough, like I was saying. Okay, so he beat Eddie Wyland. He lost to Nathaniel Wood, beat Wyland by punches, knockout, and then knocked out. And then finished Miles John by arm triangle choke in round three. So, yes. And then Santos, I think he's making his debut. No, he fought Julio Arce and lost that one. And he's coming from Brave. I don't know if he's ever fought on the contenders. I don't see contender, contender. No, 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 no. Ba, 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 ba. Nah, so he made his debut. I don't know how this guy made his debut. His record ain't even all that crazy, to be honest. I mean, he was 6-0, and then lost at ACA, so he's 7-1. and Then he beat a guy named Henrique Fantina, 8-1. Um, and Then beat a guy named Nazambek. Okay, nine and nine and one. Then he makes his debut. I mean, I, there's got to be a reason, or maybe his management got him the tie-in, and maybe they wanted somebody from Brazil. I have no idea, but it should be an interesting one. I'm taking Castaneda though. I think Castaneda is gonna get it done. Mike Davis is fighting this killer Borshev. Um, This should be a fun one as well. Borshev is six and two. He lost to Mark Diakazi, but Diakazi took him down and wrestled him the entire time. So if I'm Mike Davis. I see the I see the blueprint. You can choose to follow it or you can make this very, very difficult because there's a reason why a stand-up fighter like Mark Diakese decided to take this guy down and not stand in there and trade with this guy. He's a very, very good striker and I can see this going very, very badly for Mike Davis if Davis does not come correct. I mean, this guy's got a liver shot. He's got a left hook finish. He's got punches finish. He's got ground and pound finish. And his debut was a, I mean, the guy's a finisher. Whenever he, if, it, if the fight stopped, it's usually him stopping the fight by just violence. <laughs> um, Davis is on two fight one streak over Mason Jones and Thomas Gifford. He hasn't fought since then. That was 2021 in January. I wonder why he had two canceled fights. Wow, that's in, that's um, interesting. I do wonder why that is. Uh, a couple other good fights. 
Then I'm just going to give some notable mentions to Ola Nick taking on Elia Latifi, cheering for Latifi, hoping, hoping he gets it done. He's been doing the majority of his training at the PI with his crew. He's coming off of a, a split decision win over Tanner Bozer. And before that, he lost to Derek Lewis. And before that, he lost to Ozdemir and Corey Anderson. And before that, he was on a two-fight winning streak over Ovid St. Pru and Tyler Pedro. Jessica Penne, she's taking on Tabitha Ricci. I don't really know much about this Ricci girl. I heard she's pretty damn good, though. Did I ever see this girl fight? Oh, is this the twerking girl? I this mm, No, I don't think this is the twerking girl. Yes, I don't know who this is. Should be interesting, though. She's on a two-fight winning streak over Maria Oliveira and Pollyanna Viana. Jessica Penne, I know she's finally back. She lost to Emily Dakota, and before that, she beat Carolina Kozakaswick and Lupita Godinez by split. Brandon Allen taking on Jocko. Joaquin Silva taking on Jesse Ronson. Maxim Gershon taking on Felipe Linz. I think Linz is the guy that fought Hamzat. No. Nope. Wrong guy. Wrong guy. Oh, it's a completely different weight class. Wow, 205. I'm bugging. <laughs> bugging. Uh, I mean, we got Randy Costa taking on Guanito Canetti. Oh, man, I feel bad for Guanito because Guanito is a tiny dude. He's 42 years old. And if you want to get a knockout, you fight this guy. I mean, he's super dangerous himself, but he's small for the weight class, doesn't really want to cut the weight to get down to 25. And uh, he's dangerous because he's quick. He's smaller. You're going to be quicker. But I do think the fight's going to go in the favor of Randy Costa. Randy seems to be the guy who finishes you in round one. If the fight gets out of round one, he typically loses. Tony Kelly, ground and pound in round two, he lost. Adriana's ground and pound in round two, he lost. And in Adriana's fight, he looked phenomenal in that first round. And the other one, he beat Newsom in the first round. He beat Boston Salmon. In the first round, he lost to Brandon Davis. In the second round, and all his other fights that he won, which were four, first round finishes. This guy's an all or nothing type of guy. So, I think that's pretty much the telltale of this weekend. And that's really all I got for you guys. I'm actually going to go down to Hostra today. I'm going to get some wrestling in with the guys. Just drilling, though. I don't really want to scrap with those young whippersnappers right now. I think they're going to beat up on me. This morning, I weighed in. Weighed. Weighed. And yeah, weighed in. I guess weighed in. I weighed in at 154.2. But it was weird because between the morning I checked, which was obviously today, when I checked and then I went to get my phone and I came back. At least let me show you what's going to say on the phone because on the phone, I'm pretty sure I was one. Let me see. 154.1. Yeah. So yeah, 154, 154.2. Call it that. So, very happy with where I'm at. I am kind of getting a little crampy. I've been taking my electrolyte drinks that the UFC PI recommended and made for me and they gave me the recipe and they gave me all the stuff that I need for me to take back home to make the same stuff. Um, very, very helpful. Very, very convenient. And it's been a game changer for me in the cramping because I cramp so much, man. This has been my MO since I was in high school wrestling as a teen. Um, people would know me for cramping. I would have to take injury timeouts and matches for cramping college for cramping um, because I just cut a tremendous amount of weight and I was doing it the wrong way like I could lose the weight but losing the weight that I did and then trying to compete at a super high level where you have to flex and squeeze not the healthiest thing to do and I'm no longer 18 19 20 and 21 years old 33 so I got to start doing things the right way and make sure I'm having some longevity with my body so that's that's where I'm at with that you know so um, if you guys have questions with that let me know there's like a ratio with the glutamine, the magnesium, and the electrolytes, the electrolyte packs or, or powder, whatever that you're using. Um, they have a specific um, ratio for each one that you use. If you're interested, drop a comment or something and uh, let me know what you, what you think and I can write that out for you guys. Um, other than that, man, thank you guys for always tuning in, man. I, I hope you guys are watching the vlogs. A lot more to come. Can't wait to get to Abu Dhabi. I'm trying to figure out what gym we're going to train at when we're in Dubai. Then we're going to do our excursions in Abu Dhabi. 
And then we're going to, I guess, go back and forth a little bit. I, I want to rent a car. I'm trying to see if one of the guys out there can hook it up. Uh, anybody with any connections, let me know. Let me know. Um, be very, very interested in having something like that so that we could take care of the guys. It's going to be four to five of us. Four in the beginning, then five of us later. So a, a Jeep or something would be ideal. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'll just have to just rent it out myself and just pay the cash. Whatever. It is what it is. Got to do what I got to do, you know. It's an investment. And it's a write-off. So, I just like things that are free for some reason. I mean, I think we all do, right? <laughs> as long as they come with no strings attached, it's not like, yo, you're expecting something from me. Or it's an agreed-upon thing in the beginning, then it's okay. You know, I don't like to... I don't like people that do favors for you with the with the thinking in their back in the back of their mind that he's going to owe me something later and I'm going to make sure I call on that favor later. I, I don't like that because then it's like it's not really you doing me a favor. You're there is a motive behind it and there's nothing wrong with that. I just try not to put myself in that situation where now people are going to start asking me for stuff because I'm just like. Nah, dude, like my time is very, very valuable. And I think that's the one thing that people need to realize, like your time is super valuable. Like I get all these requests to do podcasts. I get all these requests to to do speakings. I get all these guests to come see teams and talk to people, talk to this, talk to that. I'm just like, dude, if I gave my time out to do all these things for people because I like you and we maybe we may be acquaintances or we may also be friends. I won't have time to focus on training, doing the things I need to do the right way, doing things that I enjoy. I would just be living for other people and not living for myself. So sometimes you have to be a little bit selfish in those things. And just, I just have to, be, I've been getting better at just telling people, no, like I just don't have the time. There's not enough time in a day for me to delegate all these things to people. You're talking sleeping eight hours, even though I don't even sleep eight hours. I sleep like six. Um, sleeping eight hours, that's just the general rule. Then training two to three or two to four hours out of the day, then recovery, time that you have to shower, get ready to go get your meals, then the travel time. There's a lot going on. And then I'm doing this podcast, which is something I actually enjoy doing. But sometimes even with the training, it gets really hard for me to delegate time to this. So I have to make sure I I find time and I have to be in the right mental headspace to do the podcast because if it feels like a job, I just don't want to even do it. Like I don't, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a job, but if it feels like a job that's getting in the way of my job, which is to train, to kick ass, that's a problem right then and there. So I hope you guys do understand what I, what I'm coming from with that. Uh, I do want to do an open mat training session to the public here on Long Island. I'm trying to figure out the best day to do that. I'm thinking maybe Thursday evening I can have people come out to the gym. Um, maybe have people come down with their camera crew and everything. They can watch, uh, ask questions, and just do like a big photo op and interview session. Kind of like a presser. Kind of like how Mayweather does for his boxing matches or any boxing event. I don't know, for some reason, we don't seem to have this with MMA. So I think that would be pretty cool um, leading up to this fight. If I had something like that right before I did my send off, which would be Saturday, October 8th to Abu Dhabi. So um, if you're interested, I'm I'm definitely planning on doing something like that. I know I got the Hostra kids that I'm going to do Wednesday. Maybe I just do Hostra this week and maybe... Because I'm going to spar Thursday. Okay. So maybe I do something like that around 2 o'clock. Yeah, maybe like 2 or 3 o'clock. And then I could come back and do a training session right before it gets super, super packed. Yeah. So maybe maybe we'll do something like... Okay, so this is going to be the official invite. I'm not even going to run this guy by the guys at the gym. I'm going to tell them after this podcast, but I'm thinking Thursday at 4 p.m., have the guys come in. They can watch. I'm going to hit pads, um, move around, go through the motions, drill a little bit. Um, Ooh, ah, you know, just give a little bit of a show. And then from there, if people have interviews that they want to do, we could do like a half hour sit down where people could just ask questions. If you, so if you, 
want to get me, that's probably going to be the best time. So I'm going to send this out to Mark LaMonica, Jamie Stewart, and all the people that I know that do media out here in Long Island. If anybody else knows anybody or you're inspiring MMA uh, journalists, come on down. Not this Thursday, next week Thursday, which will be October, boom, 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 October, nope, it's not, yeah, it's October 6th. Yeah, yeah. So October 6th, you guys could come down Thursday at 4 p.m. and we'll get the show started. So that would be, and I'm going to spar in the morning, so I'm going to need a little downtime to get a little bit of a break and then come back and do my second workout. So October 6th is a day, so hopefully I see a bunch of you Long Islanders down there. And as always, guys, if you like my shit, subscribe to my shit. Spin it back, fist, baby. Remember, algebraistone.com, go get yourself some merch. See you guys soon. Peace.